Hey guys, welcome to another 10 minute review. Today we have a plugin called Oh Snap by Josh Janowski and is a really, really good plugin and kind of like builds upon a few snapping tools that I've tried previously. And I think it makes it incredibly simple and it has a UI that hopefully can help you to snap more things easier. So let's get to it. All right, so welcome. For those that don't know, my name is Harvey Newman. I like to share my passion for game dev, animation, and in this case, plugins for Maya that hopefully makes your life as an animator a little bit easier and tools that are kind of like make your workflow much smoother, better, awesomer, right? So for today's video, Josh Janowski actually got in touch with me and kind of shared kindly his plugin called O Snap and snapping tools are incredibly useful. Obviously, unfortunately, Maya doesn't really have natively a way to snap things um, very easily. And snapping is something very crucial for us animators because we are always wanting to actually get weapons to look and be in a certain place, or you we want like an object for, to go from one place to another. And instead of you having to grab the object and eyeball it more or less where it needs to be, you need precision, especially in gameplay. You need to make sure that if you snap an object to another um, and it needs to be a certain pose or it needs to be for a certain um, reason, I need to make sure that the object is exactly where, where you need it to be. And this is why snapping tools are so beneficial for animators. Now, let's jump into Maya and I'll show you guys how this works. So I have it here, I have already installed it. It's a simple install. And then you have this UI called Snap. Now I have this animation that I've done absolutely years ago. It's the only thing that I found that I haven't used in this channel just yet, I think. Um, so I'm gonna use that as an example. Now, as I mentioned before, snapping tools are very, very useful for you to actually get objects to match each other. So basically, if you want an object to serve as reference for that whatever reason, so if you have a, a weapon or if you actually want to put a, a hand on a table or anything of that sort, you can select the object that you just created for reference. And then you can select the controller or object that you want to kind of like follow or um, kind of like copy certain attributes from, right? So in this case, I'm gonna select one of these little tips here from the bag. And as you can see here, I have parent snap. So if I actually select it, you can see that the object that I had as a reference snapped to the controller that I wanted to follow, or I wanted to maybe kind of like fix or anything that you want. But the beauty of this tool is that you can actually then select from just a 100% snap or no snap to uh, having specific attributes all snapping to each other, right? So in this case, if you do parent snap, everything snaps, meaning translation and rotation. But if you do a point snap, notice that the object went to the other object and they snapped, so they're now on top of each other one to one but the rotation of the object hasn't changed. The rotation is exactly as it was when it was at zero, right? You can also have the opposite, where the object doesn't snap to the location that it needs to go, but you can orient snap and have the rotations match to whatever object you decide. So you can start to see how useful this might be because for different animations and different situations, you might need different solutions, right? Now, the best thing that I like to do, and I have a video about animating with locators, and I'll link it down below, and I'll put a link as well somewhere in the video so you guys can go and check it out. But animating with locators is incredibly powerful. And the more experienced you become as an animator, the more you start to see that locators are your best friends forever. And this is how you actually get a lot of the things in Maya or animation to kind of like be precise, right? Or perhaps gimbal or Euler. There's also ways for you to fix gimbal or Euler with just locators, right? So um, Josh kindly gives us here a snap locator. And this is very useful for a multitude of users or reasons, right? But the reason why this exists is to basically have a locator being created and then being snapped to a certain position automatically. So normally, if you don't have this tool, you would have to go here to create 
and then create a locator. The cre locator gets created at zero. You have to actually manipulate the locator to actually be a certain size that you like. And then at that point, you still need to use a tool like Josh's all snap to then go, I want to snap this locator to this controller and then snap it. So this is the whole thing that you have to do just to get a locator to go to a specific controller. Now, Josh, thankfully, because I assume he's also an animator, <laughs> he gives us a snapple locator. And snapple locator basically means that he does all steps with just one click. So you can see here that the locator is being created. I can actually make it bigger if I like. Uh, in this case, this scene is quite large. The locator still came, came across very small, but you can see here that the locator is now in the same position as that as that controller. And now you can just go ahead and do whatever you decide. So, you know, copy the animation or fix certain issues or whatever you decide, right? Now, Josh also gives us here a locator size you can change. Uh, to actually have any size that you'd like. And you have small uh, tools here to bake your animation. If you like to bake your animation to, for example, a sphere or a square after you actually manipulate your animation to whatever you decide. Now, as, as a small bonus that Josh added here, um, he actually added a um, parent constraint built into this because it's not a big step to go between like just a snap to actually want an object to be constrained to another, right? So this is why you have the baking uh, options. So yeah, if I actually want to parent constraint one object to another, so it follows the whole animation, I can just select basically the object that I want to be constrained to and the object that I want to constrain and then go ahead and just right click on top of the button and go parent constraint, maintain offsets off. So this will snap it and also constrain the object to my uh, animation. So I can actually have this object follow each other. Um, and then also uh, at the moment on this object, there is no animation, right? But I can go ahead and at some point that I'm happy with, I can go ahead and actually bake that uh, constraint into my object. And I can do that in this in the different types of ways. I can basically select nothing and have the whole thing baked into the object. So you can see here that I have like now the animation into that object, as you can see here. And it's only on the keys that I decided that to, to have animation on, right? Just right there. But in this case, I had smart bake, bake uh, on, right? I can also kind of like take the smart bake off. And while the smart bake is off, it will basically be almost like a mocap uh, scene where the whole thing is actually being baked on, right? Uh, every single frame. Um, now, on top of that, I can actually go ahead and just bake a specific area of the animation. So if I want to actually uh, just bake a the translates, you know, the rotates, let's say, um, I can go ahead and just select the rotates and select bake. And then basically means that only you can see here by the key, the color of my keys, only the translates are baked and the rotates are not on the object, right? So there's plenty of options that you can have here that Josh gives you in order to make sure that you get the most bang for buck. And just like parent, there's also uh, the same thing for point constraints, for orient constraints or anything of that that you want to do. And you can also maintain offsets on or off. And what maintains off offsets on and off means is that if the objects are far apart and you want to copy the animation at that distance, you can just ma make sure that maintain offsets are on and then both objects are following each other with that offset of each object and if you don't want that offset then obviously you just go maintain offsets off and they actually overlap each other and they, the, the result that you're going to get is basically what i've showed you guys here and that is basically o snap it's an incredibly versatile tool that you should definitely keep in your shelf whenever you can because you never know when you need to snap one object to another and this is actually incredibly easy to use now this this plugin is actually not free you have to pay five dollars for but given all the work that josh has made uh for this tool i think is definitely um useful and it's something that you guys should actually kind of like support the developers because this makes our life as an animator much easier and that's all i had for you guys 
as always thanks so much for my patreons to support me every single month here is their names and that's all i had for you guys so until the next video have a great rest of the day and until then stay well stay safe peace